All right, so what is up guys? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a login and an authentication for Firebase. And let's just jump right into my demo app. So the first thing I want to show you is that you can pick a profile image. So let's go to gallery. Let's pick uh, this image here, which looks wonderful. You can crop it and you can do whatever you want to it. And then you can click on the check mark and it will put it inside this circular image view. Then you can either choose to log in or to sign up and we're just going to sign up first. So we're gonna type in first user at gmail.com and then the password will be 123123 and we will click on sign up. And as you can see, it will take us immediately to a profile page where you can see an image view of what I just inserted and my email. Then we are going to go ahead and add a username. So we can just do Federico2020 and we will save the info. And inside here, it's possible to update information, which means if you want to change the email, you can change that. If you want to change the image, you can of course go here and pick a different image, such as this one over here, for example. And then you can click on save info and all of that data will persist. But uh, let's just sign out so I can demonstrate that everything will be there just as I promised. So the first thing I need to do is remember what username I just created. So first user at gmail.com and the password was 123123. So let's go ahead and click on login this time. And as you can see, when we click on login, all of our user information will remain there. And another nice thing about Firebase is that let's pretend we close the app and we reopen the app. The authentication will persist which means we will have our information there saved because the program will check whether we are logged in or not. And if we are logged in, it will give us all of the information from our authentication. But anyways, that's going to be the app that we will be creating in this tutorial. So let's get started immediately by first connecting our app to Firebase. So to do this, we want to create an empty Android Studio project. And inside here, we will go straight up to the toolbar, click on tools, and you'll see a Firebase button and inside here, we will receive an assistant, which will give us a lot of options of how to use Firebase. So the first one we want to go to is the authentication tab. And we're going to click on that. And you'll see that it says email and password authentication. And we'll click on that link. And it will give us a few steps on how to actually connect Firebase to our application and how to make it work. It is all written in Java. So if you are a Java user, of course, you can just follow that. Otherwise, I'm going to show you how to do it in Kotlin. So then we'll go ahead and click on this connect to Firebase link. And that will take us to our Firebase console where we can go ahead and set up our project. And if you are new to Firebase, it will tell you to accept these terms and condition. And inside here, the first thing you want to do is create a project and it will retrieve all the information from the link that we have clicked on and it will insert it in the project we're about to create. So right now it already knows that we're creating a project that's called Firebase YT because that is the name of the project and that is all the information that was carried from the link I clicked on. Then we'll click on continue. And inside here, we're just going to enable Google Analytics for this project, that's fine. And the location will be in Denmark and you can just pick your own home country or whatever country you want to. But since my location is Denmark, I'm gonna click that. And I'm going to accept all the terms and conditions because that is the only way to progress with the project. Then you need to wait for Firebase to create your project. It will give you this loading screen. And as soon as it has finished, we can go ahead and click on continue and it will take us to our newly created Firebase project. But the final thing that it's going to ask you is to finalize the process by actually connecting it to the Firebase database. And all you have to do is click on connect and it will give you this white screen upon success, which tells you that your Android Studio project is connected to your Firebase Android app. And that means that everything went according to plan and we are essentially ready to start using Firebase in our app. But right before we go back to our project, let's go to our Firebase console, just by typing Firebase console in the search bar, clicking on our projects, because there's one more thing we have to do before we get started with the project and that is set up authentication. So inside here, we're gonna go to develop and we are going to click on the authentication tab. And inside here, we need to set up a sign in method and there are plenty of ways to sign in, but I'm just going to be going over the basic email and password authentication. So let's go ahead and click on that and enable that. And then we can click on save 
and that will take care of managing the permission we need to create this sign-in provider. Then we can go back to our project. You'll see that we get a notification down here in the bottom that says your app com.codepalace dot firebase yt is now connected to your firebase project which means everything is set up and the final thing to do is to add the dependencies and as you can see right here on step number two it allows us to add firebase authentication to our app and if you click on that it will just add the necessary dependency to make this actually work so we'll just click on accept changes and wait for our project to sync and in the meantime that that is syncing I just want to tell you that I've gone ahead and created a few gists, which are just shareable files from GitHub. So for example, you can see I have three tabs open up here. One is for the Gradle of my project, one is for the main activity XML, and one is for the user activity XML. And all of these will be included in the video description down below. So in case you want to copy and paste, you are more than welcome to go down there and click on the links because they will contain all the necessary information for this project. But uh, the first one we want to go to is the Gradle link. So inside here, you'll see that we'll have some dependencies that we want to copy. So first we're gonna copy the one that starts with card view and the one that ends with circular image view. And then we're gonna go back to our Android Studio project and open the Gradle scripts folder and click on build.gradle. And as you can see, the project successfully added this dependency right here, but uh, we can just get rid of that because I'm going to include it with all the other dependencies that I'm adding. And let me just go over what they are real quick. So the first one is nothing new, it's just the card view dependency. Then we have the Firebase authentication, the one that I just deleted from up here. And then we have this coroutines for play services dependency, which allows us to use the coroutines with the authentication dependency and just the play services in general. So that's very useful. And right below we have the normal coroutines, which just allow us to use asynchronous tasks. And below that we have an image picker, which is a dependency I decided to pick from GitHub. It is a very nice way to pick images. It allows you to crop them. And it was just the easiest way I found online to use the image picker. And finally, we have the circular image view, which just makes a circular image view. But let's go back to that Gradle gist. And right below, I also included a section that says project Gradle. Inside here, you'll find a Maven URL, which says jitpack.io, and you should copy all of that. And we're going to place that in our build.gradle project folder right here under the repository section of all the projects. And then we can go ahead and click sync now. And that will take care of all the dependencies we need to make this project work correctly. So next we can go ahead and click on our res folder and click on values and then go to styles because inside here we want to get rid of the action bar and to do that all we have to type in is no action bar for the app theme. It's just because the project will look a lot better without the action bar. But that is actually up to you. It's just a personal preference for me. Then we can actually close this values folder and this Gradle scripts folder, and we can go up to our manifests folder because inside here, we actually have to add an attribute that allows us to actually pick the images from the user's phone. So to do that, all we have to do is include this attribute, which says Android request legacy external storage and we have to set that to true. But after that, we can go ahead and create a new activity and we're gonna do that where our main activity is located. So we're just gonna right click on that folder and we're gonna click on activity and create a new empty activity. And we're just gonna call this user activity. And then we can click on finish and allow it to generate that activity. Next, we have to go to our drawable folder and we're just gonna go inside here and click and create a new drawable resource file. And this is just going to be one called round buttons. And that's going to be a shape. Then we're gonna go ahead and click on okay. And the only thing we have to do inside here is create an attribute called corners. And it's going to have a radius of 20 dp. Then we can close that. And that's all we have to do for this drawable. Then we can close this drawable folder and we can move on to the layout folder where we can actually add the nice login screen and the profile screen. So for the login screen, we're gonna click on activity underscore main XML and go to the split view. And we're gonna delete all of this because we're just gonna copy and paste from the link I provided in the description. And the one you want to click on is the activity underscore main XML. So you will get this gist over here and you will click on this draw button. And inside here, you'll get a lot of 
XML code that you can just copy and paste into this main activity file. And with that being pasted in, you'll see you'll get this very nice card view with a very nice login screen. And it consists of a circular image view, two edit texts and two buttons. And you're more than welcome to explore this layout in case something confuses you, but everything is very self-explanatory. All of the IDs are named accordingly, so definitely explore it if you feel like something isn't clear. But otherwise, let's move on to the activity underscore user XML, and we're gonna do the exact same thing for that. So let's delete everything that's inside here. Then let's go to the next link, which you will see in the description is called activity underscore user. And we will click on the raw button and we will copy and paste in all of this. And then you will end up with this user profile activity, which consists of a circular image view, two edit texts, a button and a text view that says sign out. And of course, you can also explore this one as much as you need. But we're just going to move on straight to our main activity so we can get started with actually coding the essential bits. And actually, I'm going to save the coding bit for the next video, which I should have up tomorrow. But uh, with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.